today our teaching is going to be titled, What is the Torah? The Torah is not what your pastor says it is. Um, I'm he sure everybody's heard of the law, which is the basically the bad mistranslation of the word Torah that's found in your Bibles. It's the, the law, I'm sure you've heard it taught in the Christian churches, that it's bondage. It's, it, to follow the law is legalism. Nobody can follow the law perfectly. It was set up as a... Um, as basically a bondage or it was set up as a way for us to earn our way to salvation all this nonsense has been taught it has been taught year after year and it's basically how satan has basically infiltrated the body of believers today with this garbage and why because when you don't obey yahweh's torah you reap the curses when you obey his torah you reap the blessings Satan does not want you to reap the blessings. He wants you to have the curses, which comes along with being Torahless or lawless. A couple things also. Imagine this. Yahweh is a holy, righteous God, which we know He is, okay? And we know that those who are found in disobedient, those who are found to be lawless or Torahless, in the last days, when He comes back, are going to be thrown in what? The lake of fire. Yet, Yahweh did not give us according to Christianity and most pastors out there and all the seminaries or cemeteries he did not give us any directions except for love your neighbor as yourself and love me with all your heart, heart mind and soul that's all he gave us he didn't give us any commands on how to do that he didn't give us any instructions on how to do that you be the judge of your own heart you be the God of your own self and you can tell me what you basically can tell yourself well how to do that and then I'm gonna throw you in the lake of fire Yahweh says if you don't uh, do that correctly yet he gave you no instructions on how to do that that's insanity the other thing is is that Yahweh freed the children of Israel brings them out of bondage when they were in Egypt, frees them, frees them from being slaves, only to put them back into bondage by giving them the Torah. That's basically what Christianity and pastors teach today. That's insane too. No, he freed them from bondage, and then he gave them his kingdom constitution on how they were going to act when they entered, or before they entered into his promised land, and once they entered into his promised land, because the Torah is holy. The Torah is righteous, just like our Father. Um, it is a guideline of instructions. You heard instructions there. Remember that. It's the guideline of instructions of how we're supposed to act as his children. Now, if you would like to give a financial gift to our uh, ministry, you can do that by hitting the PayPal link on our YouTube page, or you can do it by hitting the PayPal link on our uh, website, which is www.rottfministries.doodlekit.com. You can uh, you can do that either way. You can also hit us up on a. Pro um, hit us up on this and we'll send you the link right there if you would like to do it and i'll hit you up on youtube and send you the link so you can go to it there but um we truly appreciate everybody who does already support this ministry whether it be through your prayers or a financial gift monthly or even a one-time gift we're truly blessed to have all the supporters that we do have out there um we just want to thank you from the bottom of our heart all of our video teachings as well as our radio broadcast ministry are 100 percent free all donations are used to spread the gospel to more and more people and to help us improve our teachings. Um, we are very grateful and truly blessed to have everybody who supports this ministry. If our ministry has blessed you and Yahweh has waited on your heart um, to give, then you can click the PayPal link below or just click it on our YouTube page. But we truly appreciate everybody who supports this ministry. Also, like I said, um, you can do MasterCard Visa. However, um, you can... Um, use anything any of those to make the donation lastly uh, our brothers and sisters in the messianic congregation in cameron africa right now we're doing a building fund for them which we're helping them to get a building so that they can worship a place where they can gather weekly um every shabbat so they can gather together in a place that's theirs um so all your donations are actually going to go straight to helping them in africa and we'll be posting pictures and stuff once we do find them a location and get them up and running let's pray dear Heavenly father I want to thank you for just for all you do all you continue to do father um the fact that you are righteous you have given us your torah a guideline instructions on how we are to live father we thank you for just being the righteous judge that you are the fact that you freed us from bondage you freed us from the bondage of a spiritual egypt today 
the fact that you have made us kings and priests under the order of Melchizedek, Father. I just thank you that you are raising up a group of believers today, Father, who are not afraid to profess your truth and not afraid to share your glory to the nations. Help us to be um, those warriors who are willing to lay down their own lives, Father, for your message, to lay down their lives for the gospel. I ask that you just keep raising up a body of believers who are willing to profess your name at all costs, no matter what it is, Father. Lay us, let us lay it down for you. Thank you, Father. Praise you and love you. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, Yahweh our God, amen. Now, what is the Torah? Understand the meaning of the word Torah um, is crucial to understanding what it means. Like I said, a mistranslation is law. I don't know where they got it from. I guess it is It is sort of a law, but it really, in our language, it, 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 it destroys the, what the word Torah truly means. The Torah is the first five books of the Bible. It's truly every, every command, every word that comes from the lips of Yahweh. Yeshua, we're going to see, is the living, breathing Torah. He's the Torah made flesh. But Genesis through Deuteronomy is the is is basically makes up Yahweh's Torah. So Bereshit is Genesis, Shemot is Exodus, Vayikra is Leviticus. Now also something important here, you see the Leviticus is L E V. L E V or Lev in the Hebrew means heart. Leviticus is considered the heart of the Torah because that's where we learn how to be set apart. That's where we learn the priest how, it, how they're supposed to look differently than the word, world and how we can do that. Now the word is Vayikra. And, um, then we got the book of Numbers, which is Bamidbar, and Deuteronomy is Devarim. Basically, Genesis means in the beginning. Exodus means names. Leviticus means he called. Numbers means in the wilderness. And Deuteronomy means his words. So it would come out a little something like this if we were to read it out, the first five books. It, they would say, in the beginning, these are the names Yahweh called out in the wilderness. And these are his words. It's awesome how he puts things together like that. Now, the Torah, what does it mean? The true translation is Torah means instructions or direction, teaching, doctrine. It also can mean the way. Um, it is basically, if you remember the the, the, um, the book of Acts, Paul was uh, persecuting these group who were considered to be a part of this group called the Way, a sect of Judaism called the Way. Eventually, we see that Paul's accused of being a part of this group called the Way. We also see that they're never were called, they were called Christians, but that was in a basically a, a, um, a they were calling them Christians as like a bad, it was kind of like a bad thing. Um, how would I put it? It was, they were making fun of them when they called them Christians. They were actually called the sect of Judaism known as the Way or the Nazarene, which is Nazarenes or the Branch or the Watchmen. That, that's what they were called. Um, and we see over and over again in the book of Acts that they're called the Way. We also know that the Torah is called the Way. Yeshua was called the Way, the Truth, and the Life. Nobody comes through him except through or nobody goes to the Father except through Him. He says, I am the way. We know that the Torah is the way in the book of Psalms 119. We know that the Torah is, is, the, um, is the truth. Book, go to one, Psalm 119, you'll see that the Torah is the truth. And then if you go to the book of Proverbs, you'll see that the Torah is the life. So the Yeshua is the Torah, the Torah, the Torah. He's the way, the truth, and the life. He is the word of Yahweh, the instructions of Yahweh wrapped up in, in the man, God-man as Yeshua. Now, the word Torah means instructions, direction, way. Um, it can mean um, teacher, teachings. It's composed of the letters Yod, Resh, He. The pictorial representation, which is an arrow hitting the mark. So in, in Hebrew, in the Hebrew language, every word has a picture that goes along with it. Well, the picture that would go along with this word would be an arrow hitting the mark, hitting center mass, hitting the bullseye. The word sin, sin is chata in the Hebrew, or hamathia in Greek, which is actually a picture of an arrow missing the mark. So when we, when we walk in the Torah, we are hitting the mark. We're hitting the bullseye. When we are walking in sin, we're missing the mark. It's a beautiful, uh, it's a beautiful uh, picture that it paints of what it truly means to be lawless or Torahless or to be walking the Torah. Now, like I said, Torah is to take aim, is to hit that mark. The Messiah is the goal of the Torah. We're to walk as he walked, to do as he did. When we walk in disobedience, we are missing the mark. We are being lawless or Torahless. 
Now, 1 John 5, 2 through 4, remember I told you that they, some people say that the Torah is a burden uh, and that it, it, was, it was a bondage. But let's see what Yeshua says. By this we know that we love the children of God. The word children of God also could be there. By this we know that we love our neighbor. When we love God with all, and we basically love him with all our heart, mind, and soul, and we keep his commandments. So we know we love our neighbor if we keep his commandments and we love God. For this is how we love God, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are what? They're not burdensome. So how do we love Yahweh with all our heart, mind, and soul and love our neighbors ourselves? We keep his commandments and they're not burdensome. For whatever is born of Elohim or of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith in Yeshua HaMashiach. Yeshua is the law. He is the Torah. But also, he did not come to abolish the Torah, as many have said. Here's what he says in Matthew 5, 17. Do not think that I have come to abolish the Torah or the law or the prophets. So he has not come to abolish the first five books of the Bible or any of the Old Testament known as the prophets. He says, I have come or I have not come to abolish them, but to fulfill or to accomplish them. I tell you the truth. Until heaven and earth disappear, or is heaven and earth here to still today? Is heaven and earth still here? Yes. So heaven and earth has not disappeared. So until heaven and earth disappear, not the smallest letter, nor the least of the stroke of a pen, not the smallest jot or tittle shall pass from the or disappear from the law until everything is accomplished. Has everything been accomplished? Has Yeshua fulfilled the last four feasts? Has he come back? Has he destroyed everything around us except for his uh, except for what's going to be last and left? Has he done his thousand-year millennial reign? No, none of this has happened. So his Torah has not been abolished. The, the, the smallest letter has not been moved from it or the pen stroke. Anyone who breaks one of the least of these commandments and teaches others to do so will be called least in the kingdom of heaven. It is not a salvation issue. Uh, this is, a, this is a, uh, a priesthood issue, a kingship issue. You're not going to be considered a king or a priest in his, in, in, in his new kingdom if you teach others that the, the Torah is done away with or that his commandments are no longer intact. You're going to be considered least in the kingdom of heaven, considered barely made it by the hair of your chinny chin chin. So he says, the kingdom of heaven, but whoever practices and teaches these commands will be considered great. They'll be kings and priests in the kingdom of heaven. What's the new covenant about? I ask people all the time, what is the new covenant? Most people cannot even tell me what the new covenant is. They'll give me something like Jesus is. Yeshua is the new covenant. He is, but what is it? Let's go to Jeremiah. Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. This is the covenant or the new covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After that time, um, he says that basically declares Yahweh, I will put my Torah in their minds and write it on their hearts, and I will be their Elohim, and they will be my people. No longer will a man teach his neighbor or a man his brother, saying, Know Yahweh, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, declares Yahweh, for I will forgive their wickedness, and I will remember their sins no more. Yeshua said, or Yahweh says that basically the new covenant is where he's going to take his Torah. He's going to write it on our hearts and on our minds. And we, he will be our God and we will be his people. That's the new one. We're no longer going to be, basically, we're no longer going to uh, obey because we have to. We're going to obey because we want to, because we love him. That's it's going to be his Torah written on our heart. We're going to know right from wrong. And we're going to try to walk in righteousness. The new covenant it's the same promise made in Exodus 19, 5 through 6. A kingdom of priests, a holy nation, his special treasure possession, a group of people uh, uh, who would all profess his name to the nation. It's it, The church has not replaced Israel. We're not talking about replacement theology here. He basically, he will be, um, Israel will still, there's still 12 gates in Revelation. Israel is still his people. We will be grafted in through Yeshua HaMashiach. With the same obligation of obeying his Torah and basically walking as Yeshua walked. But with the Torah, it's going to be written on our heart. And we have been given the helper, the Ruach HaKadosh, the Holy Spirit, the set-apart spirit. And he will cleanse his people. He's going to wash him with his blood and will be washed white as snow. Yahweh promises, I will give them a heart to know me. For I am Yahweh and they will be my people and I will be their God. For they will return to me with their whole heart. This is only possible when the Ruach HaKodesh, the set-apart spirit, lives in our hearts. And when we receive Yeshua 
Hamashiach as our Lord and Savior. Now, most people don't know this, but there's 1,050 commands in the New Testament alone. There's only 613 found in the Torah. How is that possible that it, it somehow the Torah is considered bondage? There's only 613. Yeshua comes back and he makes it harder. He says, hey, it's not only adultery if you, if, you, if you have sex with a woman or if you have sex with somebody out of wedlock. He says, if you look at another woman with lust, you've committed adultery. He made it harder. He didn't come to do away with it or to abolish it. The Ten Commandments, basically it works like this. 1050 can be broken down to 613. Those 613 can be broken down to just 10. And those 10 can be broken down to just two basic commands. So all these 1,050 commandments all teach us how to do two things. To love Yahweh with all our heart, mind, and soul. And to love our neighbors ourselves. So when we keep all of Yahweh's Torah, we are actually loving our neighbors ourselves and loving Yahweh with all our heart, mind, and soul. The Ten Commandments. This is what I'm talking about. Number five is a pendulum one. It can work both ways. So the honor of our father and mother can be honoring our father in heaven or honoring our father and mother here. So do not worship any other gods. Do not make any idols. Do not misuse the name of God and keep the seventh day, the Shabbat holy. Those four plus loving our father in heaven are how we love God with all our heart, mind, and soul. How do we love our neighbor? We honor our father and mother. We do not murder. We do not commit adultery. We do not steal. We do not lie and we do not covet. And if you go and you read the Torah, it actually tells us how to, how to love our father and mother. How um, it te teaches us do not murder. Um, how do we? And then Yeshua even taught it, made it a little harder on the adultery. And he even says the do not steal. Um, we're not to basically um, charge interest, things like that. The Torah teaches us that. The, you can actually um, go through the, the corners of the fields and actually pick from, the, from, from your neighbor's um, crops from the edges glean from them and like Yeshua and his, his disciples were doing that was legal according to the Torah teaches us how to do these things what's considered stealing and what's not that's what it means that upon basically these two um, love thy neighbor as thyself and love or love thy neighbor as thyself and love Yahweh with all our heart mind and soul upon these two commandments hang all the law of the prophets hang all 613 commands because they teach us how to do these two main commandments now, I would just hope that this remnant is waking up in these last days and that they would rise up and that we would start professing his truth at all costs. I thank you. I hope you enjoyed this teaching. Let's finish up on prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for your Torah. We thank you for your word. We thank you that you have come, um, that you've set us free from bondage, that you've given us your, your instructions, your guidelines. Your, the, you've given us the way to walk, Father. Help us to walk on the narrow path that leads to life. Help us, Father, to be obedient to you and to profess your name at all costs. Raise up a remnant of believers who are not scared to preach your truth, who are not afraid to tell the people you are wrong and this is what we're supposed to do and to walk as you walked. We thank you, Father. We praise you and we love you. In the name of your Shu Amashiach and Yahweh our Elohim. Amen. I hope you enjoyed this, guys. Hope everybody has a great evening. Shalom and may Yahweh bless.